In class, we learned that most of the matter that makes up a plant comes from the carbon dioxide in the air. In order to understand how it's possible for a plant to be made up of carbon dioxide, we're going to take a look at the process of photosynthesis. Let's start by defining it. Photosynthesis is simply the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. And this conversion is powered by energy from the sun. Now this process is super important because most organisms in the world require photosynthesis to get their food. Here's why. Most organisms, like us, cannot eat carbon dioxide and get energy. That carbon dioxide has to be converted from an inorganic form into an organic form, like glucose, C6H12O6. Then we can get energy from something like glucose. So plants do us a huge favor by converting carbon dioxide from an inorganic to an organic form. And that provides the food for heterotrophs, organisms that consume other organisms, such as us. So who performs photosynthesis besides plants? Well, algae perform photosynthesis. Algae are eukaryotic protists that usually are found in water. There are also some bacteria called cyanobacteria that perform photosynthesis. And these organisms are known as autotrophs because they make their own food. Auto means self and troph means food, so they're self-feeders. Now, an important note here, there are a few autotrophs out there who don't do photosynthesis. They do chemosynthesis instead. So again, they convert inorganic into organic materials, but they use chemicals as energy rather than sunlight as energy. So where does photosynthesis occur within these autotrophic organisms? Well, let's focus on the plant. Most photosynthesis happens in the leaves of a plant, and if we zoom in on a leaf, uh, we'll find the photosynthesis really tends to happen in the middle layer, in the cells sandwiched between the epidermis. And within these cells, in the middle of the leaf, we see lots of green organelles. These are chloroplasts. These are the sites of photosynthesis. And the reason that chloroplasts are green is because they contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which captures sunlight and powers photosynthesis. Easy way to remember it is that chlorophyll fills the chloroplast. So how do plants get the reactants that they need to perform photosynthesis? Well, they get the water from the roots. Most people know that. Carbon dioxide is a little bit trickier because the leaves of plants on the top are coated with a waxy cuticle to prevent water loss. Fortunately though, on the underside of plants, there are little openings called stoma, stomata for plural. And that's how carbon dioxide can enter the leaf and how oxygen can leave the leaf. So how does photosynthesis occur? Well, photosynthesis is actually a very complex reaction that consists of many smaller reactions. And we're not going to go into the details at this point. But it is important to know that there are two main stages to photosynthesis. There's the light-dependent reactions. These are the reactions that require light. And light is used to basically split water into oxygen. Then that is followed by light-independent reactions. These reactions can occur in the dark, and during these reactions, the crucial step of turning carbon dioxide into carbohydrates, like glucose, occurs. So once the plants make this glucose, what do they do with it? Well, first and foremost, plants, like all organisms, need energy. So they might send the glucose to the mitochondrion, which will break it down during the process of cellular respiration, to produce ATP that it needs to do various things throughout the plant. However, some of the glucose may get stored. The plant may put the glucose molecules together through dehydration synthesis to form starch, and they'll save the starch for another day when they need some extra energy, or perhaps for the winter when they can't do photosynthesis. Plants might also take this glucose and put it together in a slightly different order and pr produce cellulose. Cellulose is another polysaccharide, a complex carb, and it provides structure to plant cells. 
So the plant cell walls of plants are made up of cellulose along with some other polysaccharides, all of which are made from glucose. However, the plant might also take some of that glucose and add it to some nitrogen that it gets from the soil in order to produce amino acids. And then it can take those amino acids and put the amino acids together to produce proteins. One last thing, the plant could take the glucose that it produced and through a series of chemical reactions, it could turn it into fatty acids so that it can produce lipids, such as the lipids that make up the phospholipid bilayer. All right, we're gonna end with an interesting riddle. Why do plants hate green light? If you were to grow a plant in green light, it would probably die. And here's the reason why. It has to do with the electromagnetic spectrum. Remember that visible light is just a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And light itself, visible light, is composed of many different colors. Each color has a particular wavelength and a particular frequency. Now, the chlorophyll that's in chloroplasts, the reason that they're green is because they're reflecting green light. They can't absorb it. So the chlorophyll absorbs other colors of light, like blue or red, in order to do photosynthesis, but it can't absorb green light. And that's why plants don't like green light. They reflect green light. And that concludes our introduction to photosynthesis. Don't forget to take the poll.